हेलो हेलो Good evening to everyone. Welcome to iiocs.com food tech club. Today we will learn about solar drying and intermediate moisture foods. Here we can say that uh, how the solar drying and sun drying, how it is different. See sun drying uh, which is natural drying, in the natural drying here in the picture you can see. And in the same time here also so many these are the examples for solar drying. See here closed area is there so clean and hygiene is maintained. By the picture only you can make out how neatness and also we can estimate the quality of the product. We can understand how the quality of the product is maintained. Fully covered and uh, it is a atmosphere is hygiene and uh, these products are also looking very good. So all the humidity and uh, the temperature, everything is maintained. Here you can see what and all the arrangements are there to dry the food products. This is what in controlled. No dust and all we can't see here and also the no worms and insects. <coughs> this is what about the solar drying. And this is about natural drying. All the it is on the ground only it looks like uh, the soil is there and uh, some uh, coconut it is see coconut uh, the how the drying is done already so you, we can see how the dark uh, it has become a black spots you can see this is what natural drying how it is ha happening if we if we are looking into picture then we will understand uh, how different from this natural drying solar drying how it is different so na natural drying is the process uh, that is usually done using a uh, direct sunlight that is uh, sunrise heat the product and remove its moisture through the natural air circulation so whatever the natural air circulation will be there so sunrise will come into uh, it will hit the product and remove the moisture through the natural air circulation but uh, this method is very slow process and also has a uh, disadvantages uh, such as dust contamination may happen and insects here you can see other uh, trees and all so insects insect infestation may occur and spoilage due to unexpected ra rain See, if uh, well suddenly it starts raining means uh, it, wi it will become uh, spoiled. So, we can't avoid tho that unexpected rain. So, those things and all, how you can, these many are there. It looks like it is in huge number. So, to control this one, it is very difficult in case of natural drying. So, these problems can be eliminated by using the mechanized method of drying. So here you can see there is no dust so nicely the dried product you can see. So unlike mechanized methods of drying, the solar drying is environment friendly and is done using solar dryers. So solar drying 
can be done by using the solar dryers solar dryers will help to provide more heat than the atmospheric temperature whatever the atmospheric temperature is there no so here this solar so because of that uh, the speed will be more the drying speed will be more in case of solar dryer in solar dryer air enters the drying chamber through the process of natural convection convection and conduction okay so which is got heated that ye air will come inside and which is not uh, in that way outlet and inlet the inlet will be there so air here what happens um, <coughs> the air enters the drying chamber through the process of natural convection or through the external source like fan pump suction device etc well here air gets heated because of the sun air gets heated and as it passes through the chamber then partially cools as it absorbs the moisture na so in from the inside hot air will go and it cools because of the moisture content of the food so from the food so that product is which is placed in the chamber then the humid air that humid humid air is removed from the exhaust or fan so this is what it will happen in the solar drying so the advantages of solar drying see in case of solar drying the rate of drying is increases with the higher temperature and movement of air in the chamber so food is enclosed in a dryer and therefore protected from the dust insects birds and animals so in the picture we have seen already it is enclosed in the food is enclosed in a dryer because of that we can see it is protected from the dust insects birds and animals otherwise excre excrete of animal or bird it will be falling on the food so many possibilities are n number if we are natural drying so natural resource only it is utilized in intelligent smartly it is utilized and the hygiene condition is maintained and higher the temperature it will prevents the insect infestation and faster drying rate okay what it will happen faster drying rate will be because of that it reduces the risk of spoilage by microorganisms so the dryers are waterproof so if suddenly unexpected rain comes also as the dryers are waterproof so therefore the food does not need to be moved during the rainy season so oh, it it is raining thinking that no need of removing so that will be uh, systematically arranged so the dryer the dryer can be constructed from locally available material at a relatively low cost it is not like we require more number, whatever the local uh, locally available materials only by using that one these dryers can be constructed so we can expect relatively low, low cost so that it will be helpful for the farmers also and uh, the food whatever after harvesting we can store we can utilize for drying and solar dryers la it will last longer means once you are investing a typical dryer can go for up to 15 to 20 years and uh, it requires minimum maintenance so in that way solar dryer looks very good only thing limitation will be there with any of the process limitation will be there so with the solar drying the limitation anyone can guess we can only it is used during the day time and when adequate amount of the solar energy is present during that time only during day time it can be used and the lack of skilled personnel for the operation and maintenance everyone so it requires a skilled person everywhere in the every village or who requires we can't expect the skilled will be there so it takes longer time as compared to 
modern type of electric dryer so now modern type electric dryers are there but electricity is utilized here solar energy is natural resource is utilized and it can be the the drying can be carried out but it will take more time comparing to electric dryer dryer so these are the some of the limitations and also backup heating system is necessary for these product because continuous drying if we, once we are into the drying process then it should be continuous of irrespective anything then some backup heating system should be there it only in during summer i will do it will not be like that so some backup heating system so is necessary for the solar drying in case of electric dryer means any time whenever the electricity means we can uh, 24 into 7 no problem so these are the limitations of solar drying in the same point we understood the advantages also so there are different types of solar dryers are there those are integrated solar dryers distributed solar dryers mixed mode dryer in case of integrated solar dryer the solar energy collection okay they first solar energy collection then and drying takes place in a single unit the examples like step type dryer cabinet dryers rack dryers tunnel dryers greenhouse dryers multi rack dryers these and all the examples for integrated solar dryer and distributed solar dryers distributed solar dryer in this again the solar energy collection but drying takes place in two different units in integrated solar dryer in single unit drying will be taking place in distributed two units that is a flat plate air heater and a drying chamber a flat plate heat dryer and drying chamber the flat plate heater it can be placed on the roof of building or on the ground otherwise uh, the place where the sun's intensity is high in that way that flat plate will be placed here air is heated in distributed solar dryer air is heated in the flat plate heater and with the help of blower the heated air gets circulated in the drying chamber so this is what how in the flat in the single unit only everything will happen here two units that is flat plate he air heater and drying chamber in mixed mode dryer again in industry and all these and all the different types it is used so in case of mixed mode dryer in this solar energy collection so all in all the types solar energy is the main so solar energy collection takes place at both the flat plate air heater as well as drying chamber so only the name is mixed mode we are telling in distributed in distributed solar dryer only the he that uh, he solar energy collection is taking place on the flat plate heater and next that uh, yeah, the air we the air is heated na so that will be blowed but here it is collection will be taken place on the both the things and the drying takes place only in the drying chamber okay so the outer part of the dryer will also get the solar energy and this helps to remove the moisture quickly so these are the types of solar dryer here, here you can see the picture whatever i explained see this is the integrate integral type single unit okay and distributed indirect type here you can see that plate i told na so this is the plate and this is the chamber here the chamber over that roof is there so here the plate and mixed mode type so in the mixed mode type 
here you can see see here for the chamber sun solar energy is not collected only on the plate that hot air will be blown here okay so here what is happening the solar energy is collected on the chamber also and over the plate also so in this way the hot air will be blown and uh, the food will be get dried here so here the mark uh, whatever it is shown na uh, arrow mark bigger the that tree is about the solar radiation and the single arrow mark is air flow this is the air flow how it will happen so this is the hot air uh, here what is happening is on it is a single unit so from that uh, the it is coming okay it is the single unit but here two unit plate and chamber flat plate and chamber but so this is the mixed mode type <coughs> now as we told some of the dryers we will look into uh, some of the dryers that is step type solar dryer in step type solar dryer the dryer area is covered with the two layers of 3 mm thick of plain glass in the picture you can see so solar dryer here the dryer area is covered with the covered with the two layer of 3 mm thick plain glass with an air gap of 2.5 cm the absorber is made up of galvanized iron sheet with a black paint on the top here if you see the black color you can see so black paint with a black paint on the top so dryer racks are placed over it down here so these are the dryer racks for the entry of fresh air the holes are provided below the first step of rack the first step will be there na so below that rack the holes are provided and solar radiation hit the plain glass so solar radiation will be hitting the plain glass and the uh, is plain glass surface and heats the fresh air passing inside thus the heated air takes play, take uh, takes up the moisture contained from the product and escapes through the chimney here the chimneys you can see okay here chimneys are there so through that that uh, moisture the heated will air it, it will take the moisture content and it will ex escape through the chimney that is other uh, this is the other end of the dryer so total cost about 15000 approximately and it is used to for the to dry the fruits and vegetables and other agricultural commodities can be dried by using step type solar dryer which is comes under first type whatever we discussed na so integrated so that type of a dryer here the silent features of this dryer is that it will takes play it the solar dryer takes 40 hours for drying the 50 kg of papaya leather so 40 hours it is it requires to dry the 50 kg of papaya leather while conve conventional sun drying it will take 61 sun drying so the difference will be about we can say 21 hours if we are using step type solar dryer okay this is what one type of a solar dryer now forced convection solar dryer see this is the picture of forced air air discharge is there cabin is there air blower okay air track air heater this is the glass sheet hmm? so forced convection solar dryer in this the function of this dryer is drying grains and chillies copra so these materials can be dried it is a permanent and large scale use of a solar dryer here the solar heat absorbing 
panel utilizes the whole roof area and constitutes the roof top of the drying chamber see air circulation is done by means of the electrically drying fan so fan should be required by means of by using the fan the air circulation will be done then ambient air is drawn in the form yeah, in the from one end of the solar inlet and heated by solar energy as it passes along with the length of the absorber and then hot air is discharged into drying chamber okay so the material to be dried could be placed in a trays or in bins with a perforated bottom and a supplementary heater could be installed to boost the air temperature so advantages of the forced solar dryer is no car caramelization in case of anything copra no caramelization will occur and no heat damage and uh, it is all because of i can tell you because of the forced air so acceleration of the drying rate okay so because of the forced air no caramelization means he heat will not remain as it is so continuously with a high temperature it will so disadvantages are a product of a inferior appearance may result we uh, if immature fruit is dehydrated then we can expect the appearance will not look because shading prevents the breakdown of chlorophyll okay so this is the one disadvantages and it is the picture this is the diag drawn one diagrammatically here the actual one it is you can see how the hot air and all air track how it will be here air track is looking here air track how it is looking here air blower is there the electric fan will be there inside hmm? so this is what air discharge and all how it will happen these are the glass sheets now coming to solar tunnel dryer the picture you can see the picture how it is like tunnel only solar tunnel dryer the as the its name suggests the tunnel dryer is semi cylindrical tunnel shaped dryer the frame of the structure is made of galvanized iron and covered with ultraviolet stabilized polythene sheet see these are the stabilized polythene sheet of a 200 micron size which maintains heat inside the dryer so this 200 micron size stabilized polythene sheet maintains the heat inside the dryer while the inlet at the back end of the dryer it it will allow the fresh air to enter the dryer the exhaust fan will be there so that will be there in the front side and it will remove the moisture air from the product so this type of dryer is used for drying the sago coconut see coconut natural drying also we have seen in this we, if we are drying coconut there will be no spoilage and it will be in good condition chillies amla i onions and other agricultural products can be dried so for example in case of sagu the drying time in the solar tunnel is in the dryer it will be about 5 hours whereas in open sunlight just sun drying it will be about 11 hours more than double okay five so we can tell around 55% of drying time is saved in a solar tunnel dryer so the cost of this dryer is approximately 1 lakh 20000 standardized size will be this is the standardized size so this is about the solar tunnel dryer so just overview we will understand little more about the solar dryer we know that the traditional methods of drying is to uh, pl place the food stuff in 
sun in the open air correct so but this method that is what this method the, the traditional method of drying will will call it as a sun drying and uh, it is effective for small amount of the food for example in house i am making papad means that is okay so sun drying will be okay for four members i want to prepare that time i can't invest for the solar drying but the area what uh, the area needed for sun drying expands with the food quantity correct if i want to give for somebody if i want to prepare for prepare more amount then sun drying requires more uh, area since the food is placed in open area easily it will get contaminated monkeys will come insects will come birds will come we can't uh, always one person should be there uh, to avoid that one and place is important where the place we can maintain that is and all place is also the one of the requirement therefore one major reason why the sun drying is not easily performed with the larger quantities of the food is that the monitoring and overview becomes increasingly more difficult with increasing food quantities in contrast to the sun drying okay so where the food is exposed to directly to the sun the solar drying method uses indirect solar radiation in case of sun drying the direct sunlight is used but in case of solar drying indirect solar radiations are used so the principle of solar drying technique is it is to collect solar energy by heating up the air volume in the solar collectors and conduct the hot air from the collector to an attached enclosure the meat drying example the meat drying chamber here the products to be dried are laid out so this is what how the uh, solar drying is done so in this closed system consist uh, consisting of solar collectors and the meat drying chamber without direct exposure of the meat to the environment meat drying is more hygienic and we know that meat is very perishable so we have to maintain hygiene condition so there is no secondary contamination of the product through the rain or dust insect or rodents or birds so like that it can be dried the products are dried by the hot air only okay so in case of solar drying products are it is indirect so there is no direct impact of the solar radiation or sunshine on the product the solar energy produces the hot air in the solar collectors and increasing the temperature in a given volume of the air decreases the relative air, air humidity and increases the water absorption capacity of the air okay so this is what a steady stream of a hot air into the drying chamber and circulating through and over the meat pieces results in a continuous and efficient dehydration so the solar dryer is relatively simple concept an important feature of solar drying devices is the size of the solar collector depending on the quantity of the goods to be dried collector must have capacity to provide sufficient quantities of hot air to drying chamber so collectors which are too small in proportion to the amount of the food to be dried will result in failed attempts and spoiled food so based on the collector only we can think of the amount of food to be dried so basic principle of solar dryer is uh, like converting light to heat here as we are not using direct uh, sunlight so here basic principle is here converting light to heat any black on inside the solar dryer it will improve the effectiveness of the turning light to light into heat so only we know that black will absorb heat uh, sun rays it will very soon <coughs> so trapping heat isolating isolating no, sorry 
trapping heat this what it will do isolating the air inside the dryer from the air outside the dryer this is the converting light to heat and the next principle is trapping heat so isolating the air inside the dryer from the air outside the dryer makes an important difference using a clean solid like plastic bag or a glass cover will allow the light to enter but once the light is absorbed and converted into heat so the plastic bag or a glass cover will trap the heat inside this makes this makes it possible to reach similar temperature on a cold on cold and windy days as on the hot days okay so this is what trapping heat and moving the heat to the food now both the natural convection dryer and the forced convection dryer use the convection of the heated air to move the heat to the food when heat is moving to the food then food is get dried so this is about the solar drying now we will understand the intermediate moisture foods and we call it is imf here we can see some of the example resins are there hmm? jam is there some moisture intermediate moisture food is there that is beef with barbecue sauce sweet and sour pork see by appearance only you can make out that intermediate moisture food it means moisture content will be intermediate it is not more also not too less as in case of dried products okay so it is a intermediate moisture food so traditionally uh, the intermediate moisture food that is imf it can be regarded as one of the oldest food preserve preserved by the man the mixing of ingredients to achieve the given water activity it will allow the safe storage while maintaining the enough water for the palatability means to maintain the freshness to maintain the palatability some amount of water is required the work done by the food scientists approximately 3 decades ago in the in search of convenient stable products through the removal of the water it is resulted into modern intermediate moisture foods so these foods really rely heavily on the additional of the see in these foods heavy addition of the humectants preservatives and because to prevent the or to re reduce the growth of microorganisms this is, this and all will be added so a product that has a water activity below that which is required for the growth of microorganism that is the imf the food product that has a water activity below that you know, which is required for the growth of microorganism generally it contain it contains moderate level of moisture this we have to remember then how much moisture that is 10 to 50% of moisture 10 to 50% of moisture and water activity will be around 0.6 to 0.90 okay this much of water activity and 10 to 15% of moisture this is what about the um intermediate food imf so we have to remember water activity 0.6 to 0.9 and 10 to 50% of moisture then and also with this moisture content it contains a sufficient amount of dissolved solutes so the principle behind this imf that is intermediate moisture how they will achieve this water activity how they will achieve this much of percentage with the different product is by means of high osmotic pressure which is associated with high concentration of solutes for example naturally the intermediate 
IMF product naturally available is honey. So honey is a very good, it is having very good shelf life. That is also comes under in the intermediate moisture food. And confectionery products, very good shelf life like uh, confectionery products like jellies, jams, fruit cakes, hmm? partially dried products also, fig, dates, these and all intermediate moisture foods. Now the advantage is as it is having the water activity around 0.6 to 0.9 and also because of that it is uh, uh, the means it is a microbial it is a mic it is having a safe mean it microbial stability and it is safety okay by means of this we are achieving the microbial stability and safety and intermediate moisture foods are easy to prepare and store without refrigeration we can store without refrigeration also and preparation also it is easy there are energy efficient and relatively cheap okay so comparatively it is cheaper and they are not readily subject to spoilage easily it will not spoil okay so even if packages have been damaged prior to opening then also the thermo stabilized uh, with the food because of the low water activity we can see the it will be in good condition and this is a plus for the many developing countries especially those in a tropical climates with inadequate infrastructure for processing and storage and offers some marketing advantages for consumers all over the world jam preparation sauce preparation many products can be manufactured and uh, in the same point uh, disadvantages also there so disadvantages of some of the intermediate moisture foods are it contains high level of additives that is nitrates sulfates humectants so because of the high content it may cause health concern that is maybe the legal problem um, so they may not follow the regulation and high sugar content is also concern because of the high calorific value sugar okay so high because of the high calorific value that is also one concern therefore the efforts are being made to improve the quality of such foods by decreasing the sugar and salt addition as well as by increasing the moisture content and water activity but without sacrificing the microbial stability and the safety of the product if stored without refrigeration okay so this is the important thing which we have to achieve and this may be achieved by intelligent application of the hurdles that is uh, how it can be fruits product the fruit products from the intermediate moisture food which will appear to have the potential market so the application of this technology to produce the stable products at a ambient temperature is limited by the high concentration of the solutes required to reduce the water activity to the safe level this usually affects the sensory properties of the food okay so these are the some of the dis disadvantages of the imf now how the processing has to be done here the processing is partial drying is the first thing so partial drying has to be done to achieve 0.6 to 0.84 water water activity in the food product so partial drying is employed for the raw food that is naturally it will have high amount of the naturally the humectants will be there uh, such as resin apricot prunes hmm? so these are the so humectants are solute okay naturally in the sugar in the resins we know the sugar content will be there the humectant means solutes such as salt and sugar so why we are calling it as a humectant because it is immobilized water in food it it will not allow the water to move that is it, it will not not it will not make water as a free water 
bond water it will be okay so the drying process removes the free water and the humectant in the product bind to the rest of the water not allowing it to be utilized for chemical reaction for the microbial use humectant it will absorb the atmosphere and it will not allow to the microbes then comes to after the partial drying next step is osmotic drying by using the humectant so osmotic dehydration is the process of soaking food in highly concentrated solution of the humectant that is salt and sugar are the commonly used humectant so water diffusion diffusion means uh, water from its higher concentration to its lower concentration from the food to humectant solution so that is caused by the osmotic pressure that the water is replaced by the humectant and it will results in the lower lowered water activity for the food product so osmotic dehydration so osmotic dehydration process it will result in two ways mass transfer in regards to the moisture lost and solid gain okay so solute will be increasing and moisture will be lost so last time i have shown with the using picture so with the moisture loss being much greater than the addition of the solids okay so the advantages of the osmotic dehydration it will include low processing temperatures and short drying time and 220 to 30 percent lower energy consumption than a typical dehydration process so like this osmotic drying by using the humectants so we have to remember sugar is used as a humectant for candied intermediate moisture fruits and salt is used as a uh, humectant for inter intermediate moisture vegetables and fish so additionally a mixture of humectants can be formulated to manipulate the sensory properties of the food product so osmotic drying by using the humectant results in soft texture so this is i can tell you improved version of the solar drying means fully dried one means it will some products it will be okay but in case of fruits and vegetables fully we are drying means it is not the 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 soft texture is required for fruits and vegetables so for that this will be very good method and dry infusion next step is dry infusion so dry infusion is the combination of partial dehydration and osmotic dehydration okay using the humectant see so the food product is first dehydrated then the resultant product is added to the humectant solution to reach the desired water activity this method is desirable because it results in higher quality and more appealing product so however the more energy is used for this method because it is having the two steps combined so these and all the different uh, types where the intermediate um, imf can be manufactured so dry infusion is a primary employed in by the us military and nasa for the production of imf to produce safe palatable food and that can be consumed much later than okay it is produced so dry infusion is a combination of partial dehydration and osmotic dehydration it is also one of the method these are and all processing uh, different processing types now formulated intermediate moisture food many types of uh, foods are specially formulated to achieve the water activity in the intermediate moisture food range okay so food ingredients are mixed with the salt or sugar 
and also additives are used like polypropylene glycol sorry propyl pro polypropylene glycol potassium sorbate okay so for the processing methods uh, such as cooking and extrusion and dehydration to result in a intermediate moisture final product so example of formulated imf or confectioneries and pet food water activity like 0.85 to 0.75 in case of sweet condensed milk that is also we have to remember these examples that is sweet condensed milk and fruit cake salted fish molasses jams dog food dried fruit icings soya sauce jam these and all the examples for intermediate moisture food those and all the formulated one okay so this is the requirement and in case of dates fix nuts these and all natural available fix correct so these case of dates and all how much they will dry it formulated that is 0.75 to 0.65 will be the water activity and in case of honey chocolate natural imf honey okay in this 0.6 to 0.65 we have to remember okay in case of dates it will be more active water activity honey will be less okay but it looks like honey will have more correct consistency but it is not like that so honey will have more uh, less water activity that is because in that more fructose is there honey the sweetness of the honey it is because of the fructose and uh, chocolate bar marshmallow biscuits and all comes see the consistency how it is and how the natural available honey so these and all in in interesting facts of the nature and human whatever made so now we will understand the different types of imf are there like uh, pet food baked goods and confectioneries and again fruits and vegetables those things just we'll look into that one so pet food semi moist pet food such as chibi dog tra treats and soft cat treats uh, are the shelf stable soft and do not have the high moisture content those also comes under imf and ingredients added to intermediate moisture pet food to achieve the lower water activity or soya flakes and wheat flour is added to solute such as glycerol salt and sugar okay so and processing techniques such as extrusion are the employed here extrusion is that whatever i told na ingredients so those will be mixed and extrusion is employed to attain the final intermediate moisture pet food and intermediate moisture pet food are convenient products because they leave less odor and are less messy than canned wet food so imf are preferred because less messy additionally they have been found to be more palatable to pets pets are liking more because of the mm, freshness imf means okay comparing to the other thing they are liking this Uh, comparing to dry pet foods they are liking imf pet uh, pet food so various candy and confectioneries also pet food it will comes now baked goods and confectioneries cakes are considered to be intermediate moisture food soft how soft it will be correct everyone will like cake so because of their moisture content in the cake how much moisture 82 to sorry 18 to 28 percentage and have a low enough water so okay it will have the in low enough water activity that preserve the safety and quality some examples of baked goods and confectionery that come under the category are fruit cakes pie fillings candies marshmallows jam and pizza crust these are the examples tutti frutti also a candy like product that can be made from the variety of the fruit papaya is used in to make the tutti frutti 
so that is also imf example for imf raw pieces of un unripened papaya are boiled and it is layered with the sucrose until it reaches to 68 degree bricks so when we are eating tutti frutti we never feel it is from the papaya <laughs> so because of this much of high sugar content and so nice texture tutti frutti it is like jelly pectin jelly but it is from the papaya raw pieces of the unripe papaya it is done so the solution is then air dried until the moisture content to 25.7% till that time the drying is done in case of tutti frutti then will the in case of fruits and vegetables dried pineapple so in dried pineapple what they will do is sugar is added to the fruit to the protect against the microbial contamination and also to reduce the water activity in the fruit then it will allow the fruit to more stable at a room temperature some of the examples like strawberry prune peaches apricot and pineapple so this modified okay food blueberry are prepared by the osmotic inter moisture food moisture food okay intermediate moisture blueberry moistured food blueberries are prepared by osmotic intermediate imf blueberry okay by dehydration so they are soaked in sugar again for 1 to 2 days and by freeze drying until it uh, desired moisture it will reach na so it will be freeze dried then meat also meat example is pastrima and uh, ferment fermented meats sausage jerky and corned beef it can last for many months see which is very perishable without refrigeration then how the imf is playing a role in meat fermented meats sausage jerky this patrima is a beef product okay it is often eaten raw in middle east and mediterranean countries it is made from the hind quarter of the beef cattle pastrima okay so is the type of intermediate moisture food and and can be stored for several months in a humid climate so the meat is salted and dried to produce a water activity and increase the microbial safety additionally nitrates are added for the preservation the, to the meat how they will be imf product how it is made first it will be salted then it is dried to reduce the water activity then it is uh, it will because of that when uh, water activity is reduces definitely it will increase the microbial safety then with the, this much is not uh, sufficient for that additionally nitrates and are added for the preservation and the final product has 5% salt and the moisture content is about 30 to 35% in imf meat so i think uh, here we will end the session goodbye for today for any enquiry you can call or whatsapp to the number which is uh, available on the screen so we'll meet again in this same platform and hope you will continue your preparation with iocs.com thank you one and all